Dear learners, I welcome you all to this module on Young Team Management, which is a part of the MOOC on Capacity Building of the Tea Growers. In the previous module, we have discussed land preparation and planting of tea. In this module, we shall discuss the different methods that are adopted to train the young plants to form a low spreading bush with a well-developed frame and branch system. The initial four to five year period after planting is crucial because during this formative period, if a good frame cannot be developed, the plantation cannot sustain high yield. The formation of a bush frame is therefore one of the main objectives of young tea management. However, the maintenance of the health and vigor of the plant by proper nutrition, protection from pests and diseases, conservation of soil and water during this period are equally important for the development of a good frame. Therefore, the main objectives of this module are to state the objectives of training the young tea, describe the different operation adopted in training the young tea, outline the methods adopted in bringing up the young tea into bearing and explain the importance of different cultural practices adopted in young tea management. Now let us look at the objectives of training and young tea management. The tea plant by nature is a small tree or shrub. However, when it is cultivated, the plant is trained to form a low spreading bush so that the maximum vegetative growth or shoots can be harvested at a convenient height. The objectives of training or bringing up the young tea are to develop a low spreading frame for quick ground coverage, to form a plucking table at convenient height for plucking, uh, to develop a sturdy bush frame or a permanent frame during these formative years for the capital invested in planting. Recent methods of young tea management emphasize the harvesting of good crops as well as building up of a healthy permanent frame to support high yields in years to come. However, health and vigor of the plant are not sacrificed at the cost of higher yields during the formative period. A good management should strike a balance between these two factors and such tea bushes should yield anything in between 1,000 to 4,000 kg of med tea per hectare after fourth or fifth year of planting. Good management practices consist of adoption of suitable post-planting operations so as to enter encourage early and vigorous growth. It consists of the following. Adoption of suitable measures to increase the root volume to sustain the growth of heavy foliage Adoption of suitable measures to increase the density and area of the bush frame to facilitate harvesting of higher number of shoots for longer periods. Adoption of efficient and timely plant protection measures to relieve the young plants from unnecessary external stress, thereby allowing the plants to grow with their full potential. Judicious harvesting of shoots without affecting the health and vigor of the plants, application of manures and fertilizers, commiserating with the growth requirement of the plants, adoption of suitable cultural operation like drainage, shade, irrigation, etc. to provide a healthy environment for the luxuriant growth of the plants. Now, let us look at frame formation. One of the basic aims of training of young tea plants is to develop a good permanent frame during the formative years for sustained high yield. An ideal bush frame should be wide and compact without adequate number of uniformly thick and distributed branches. The different methods adopted for frame formation consist of various operations which are carried out during the initial four to five years after planting. Before describing the methods, let us describe the operations that are adopted for training the plants one by one. We shall first refer to the term decentering. 
this is the operation in which the main stem is removed at a height of about 20 cm from the ground level. The operation is done when the plant makes one flush or growth following transplanting in the field and whilst they are bungee. Decentering is done by leaving at least two to three laterals below the decentering cut. The cut should be clean and slope towards the center. Laterals are then cut at 35 cm above the ground level. Removal of the main stem and excision of the laterals promote more laterals from lower portion of the stem, thus increasing the number of branches. Secondly, we have to refer to thumb breaking or lung pruning. In this operation, the young plant is held between the thumb and the index finger at a height of about 20 cm from the ground and the stem is broken in such a way that the tissues on one side of the stem are left intact for movement of water and nutrients. The broken portion of the stem should be bent towards the ground facing either south or west depending upon the row direction. It encourages development of laterals below the broken height. This is called thumb breaking. If the stem is thick enough and the thumb breaking cannot be done, a small pruning knife can be used to break the stem cutting in one side of it. This is called lung pruning. Lung pruning or thumb breaking can be done if stretch content is in roots is not at its optimum. Then we must refer to pegging or bending. It is the operation by means of which the main stem and subsequently the laterals are bent with the help of pegs to encourage lateral developments. The bending is done at an angle of 60 to 70 degrees from particles. Normally, this is not practiced nowadays. Then we can refer to debugging. In this operation, buds from the leaf exiles are removed from the upper portion of the plants, leaving the lower 20 cm untouched. This is done with the help of a small hacksaw blade or using finger. The top two leaves in the bud should be tipped off from the plants before debugging. This stimulates the buds below to swell and the removal of the buds become easy. Debugging can be done in the nursery four to five days before planting. Debugging at the nursery is economical and convenient. After about four weeks of planting in the field, the removal of bud, if any, left out in the first operation should be done. When debugging is done, buds remaining below the height of 20 centimeters from the ground grow and form healthy laterals. The main stem should be removed by giving a clean cut at 20 centimeters. The main objective of the above operations are to suppress central dominance or apical dominance and apical growth, distribute vigor for even radical spread so that there is uniformity in distribution and thickness of branches at the, at the final height of the permanent frame. How should be the frame forming prune? By adopting different operations described above, the plants are made to develop new branches of first tire in the, in the frame. Sorry. By adopting different operations described above, the plants are made to develop new branches of first tire in the frame. After about 20 to 26 months from planting, a prune called the first formative prune is given at a height of 5 cm below the predetermined height of the permanent frame. Normally, in the plain areas of Northeast India, the height of the permanent frame is maintained at 40 to 45 cm and in the hilly areas at 35 to 40 cm. However, the bushes should be pruned only when the branches are 1 cm thick at the pruning height. Thicker branches are head back on merit and the concession and any concession at the center is removed. After pruning, new shoots develop from the pruned branches which form the second tire of the frame. Finally, after two years, the final frame formation prune is given 5 cm above the first prune. 
at the time of final frame formation prune, the bushes are completely cleaned out, removing the crossing, diseased and weak branches and snacks. After this prune, the bushes are considered to be mature ones and thereafter the tea is brought under normal pruning cycles. What is the procedure of stretch taste in roots? It is essential to taste the stretch reserve in roots before decentering. The procedure is as the following. Select at random 10 to 12 plants per bigha for stretch taste in roots. Collect the roots of about 0.5 cm thick from the selected plants by digging a hole 10 cm away from the collar of the plants up to 10 to 15 cm depth. Give a sharp cut on one end of the root and put one to two drops of iodine solution on the cut end and wait for five minutes. The iodine solution is prepared by dissolving properly one gram iodine and one gram potassium iodide in four to five milliliter of distilled water in a glass beaker. Make up the volume to 100 milliliter by adding distilled water and preserve the solution in a colored bottle wrapping with carbon paper. After about five minutes of putting the solution to the cut end of the root, deep blue color develops if there is sufficient stress. No change in color occurs if the reserve is low. Now, what are the cultural practices to be adopted in young tea management? First, weed control. Weed control is an important practice in young tea management. The young tea plants are extremely subs uh, susceptible to weed competition. Weed growth is very prominent in the first and second year of planting before the plant cover the ground. During March to October, weed growth is most vigorous in young tea areas. Therefore, utmost care should be taken to control the weed growth during the period, which may be controlled both by manual or mechanical and chemical methods. Mulching is one of the most effective measures to control weed growth in any young tea areas. Then we can refer to the planting of temporary shade. Tree species in young tea areas is important to provide shade to the young plants. The permanent shade tree species are planted at the time of planting tea. These species being slow growing cannot provide shade to the young tea plants. Generally, some quick growing species like Indigofera tasmani should be planted at closer spacing which are later thinned out and finally removed completely when the permanent shade trees are shade trees take over. These temporary shade trees are kept in the young tea areas for initial five to six years. Regular loping of branches may be done if the shade becomes dense. The temporary shade trees are kept in the young tea areas for initial five to six years. The regular loping of branches may be done if the shade becomes dense. Then application of fertilizers. The application of fertilizers in young tea plays a significant role in the establishment of frame and yield during the formative period. Nitrogen, phosphorus and potas are applied to the young plants in the form of YTD or NPK mixture at the frequent intervals. Then green cropping is also useful in young tea. The trees and shrubs used for perennial manures are known as green manure crops. They are initially used as cover crops and later they or their lopings are either hoed into the soil or mulched to enrich the soil. Crotalaria anagiroids is the most useful among the green manuring crops. It grows rapidly and resists the drought well. It is better to grow a mixture of species of green crops which are known to grow quickly and make bulky crops in that area in order to provide large amount of organic matter. Then in order to provide large amount of organic matter, fix atmospheric nitrogen and add in appreciable quantities. Pest and disease management is another very important uh, pest 
and disease management is also very important in young tea areas. Poor drainage, heavy or poor seed with, infest with infestation are some of the factors for the incidence of pests and diseases in tea. Then the drainage in the young tea areas should be proper. The field drains should be deepened to keep the root zone free from waterlogging. Keeping the drains free from the weeds and maintenance of the drains by removing the silt and soil due to bank slip are important. Watering may also be needed in the event of drought due to delay in arrival of the monsoon in some, er in some years. In drought prone areas, mulching is most important for the conservation of soil moisture. So, we come to the end of this module. In this module, we have discussed the different aspects of young tea management. We have learned that the initial four to five years after planting tea is the most crucial period of tea cultivation because during this formative period, the tea plants are trained to form a low spreading bush. The objectives of training are to develop a low spreading frame for quick ground coverage to develop a sturdy bush frame for sustained luxuriant vegetative growth in future years to facilitate easy plucking at a convenient bush height and to harvest maximum possible crops during the early years. The frame developed during this stage is called permanent frame as the frame is not disturbed during the entire lifespan of the bush. For developing the bush frame, different operations are adopted. These are decentering, lung pruning or thumb breaking, pegging or bending, debugging, etc. The main objectives of these operations are to suppress the central dominance and apical growth, distribute vigor for even radial spread so that there is uniformity in distribution and thickness of the branches in the bush frame. Besides, with control, temporary set tree planting, pest and disease control, manuring, drainage and irrigation also play important role in young tea management. So, see you in the next module. Till then, bye.